is at 2 p.m. So there's only going to be one talk in the afternoon session. We'll do the discussion right afterward, and um, then we'll be able to head out a little earlier than usual on Monday. So, everybody understood? Fantastic. Thanks so much. Okay. Thanks a lot. I'm really very grateful to be invited here. Um, so, uh, natural language inference, um, and I guess there's, there's going to be this whole issue about reasoning and so on afterwards if, if, if you want to take it up, but um, typically it's when people uh, talk about it, they typically uh, develop it for somehow some kind of a cleaned up version of natural language which omits disfluencies, parentheticals, fragments, which are pretty common in spoken language. Um, uh, so um, here's just a, a little example of that, um, of this cleanup process, um, where this is an interview about two years ago with the, uh, Roy Hodgson, the English uh, football manager, where he said, I'm, really, I'm just really anxious. Uh, not anxious, anxious is the wrong word. I'm excited about tomorrow. Um, so typically, if, if people will, will talk about this kind of uh, example, they'll just clean it up into, I'm excited about tomorrow. Um, that's, if you want to leave the indexicals there, or they might even um, kind of make it even more kind of context independent by resolving that to Roy Hodgson excited about 11 October 2013, or maybe even to, uh, some kind of a uh, first order logic type thing like in, in uh, 1D. Um, and I'll uh, use 1E to register my uh, shock at what happened yesterday. Brexit, so I'm shocked about yesterday, uh, not about what's going and, and I guess shocked about what might happen tomorrow, but anyway. Um, okay, uh, so now spoken language interaction, um, in contrast to say text, is, is, is typically then perceived as kind of messy. Um, there are lots of fragmentary entrances, um, this fluency is, is rife. And there's also typically also kind of some kind of gestural effect, affect like uh, part of what I'm, as you're seeing me performing now. Uh, here's a little example from uh, the pain corpus, uh, corpus collected at Queen Mary University of London. Um, so somebody's telling somebody about a, uh, a d difficult experience that they had. They took a bit of my bone away, um, also in the process, because it was so like, <laughs> um, so what did they put there instead? Uh, didn't put anything. It was a, a huge, uh, it was a, a big hole it was. What's there now? Huh? Um, what's, what's, what's in your mouth now? There's nothing. I have like this, this, this piece of gum that's, that you know, um, it's just sort of gummed back together. So here are some examples of, of, of uh, corrections, uh, uh, corrections that happen um, where somehow this, it was this huge, gets somehow corrected, it was a big hole. Um, then um, a similar kind of thing is happening here, um, where um, and, and here we have an example of this a fragmentary utterance "ha," huh, which is used to uh, um, express some kind of a, a clarification request about the, the utterance in five. Um, now, as we all know, in fact, um, but often don't acknowledge, conversational interaction is the primary me medium of language use. Um, both phylogenetically and ontogenetically. Um, and of course, we do it easily. Um, so it's probably a good idea if we're interested in characterizing our reasoning capabilities to somehow uh, ground a, a, an account, such an account in conversational interaction that use, uses real um, uncleaned up language. Um, and I'm sure this is uh, controversial for some people. Um, so what I'm going to do Today, I'm going to first just throw a couple of bits, bits of data at you. Um, throw a, a sort of the, the basic perspective, which is somehow understanding is utterance classification in, in some kind of in individualized notion of context. Um, sort of sketch how this can be done in uh, two, two frameworks, a, a framework that's called type theory with records, um, which, 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 which grounds the semantics and which grounds the, the framework that we have for, for reasoning about dialogue. And then I'll go back to, to, to the actual uh, data. So here's the first example, the first piece of data. Uh, this is a conversation between a, a parent and a child in a kindergarten. So uh, the parent says, tell me something about, interesting about kindergarten today, honey. Well, there's the Pleasant Legions. The Pleasant Legions? Yeah, it's like a prayer to the flag. Um, 
So here we have an example of uh, how essentially any, any utterance, um, any bit of an utterance can give rise to some kind of clarification. Um, and the problem is to explain the, the, this potential and how in context, just repeating something, this gets to mean something like, what do you mean by what you just said? What do you mean by the pleasant legions, right? Um, so here we have the, the continuation in a sense, right? Um, so um, there's the pleasant legions, the pleasant legions, yes, I created the flag. Oh, you mean the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, so in order to understand what's going on there, we need to look at two contents, both the content or, or the utterance, two utterances, the utterance of the, the child and somehow what the adult is trying, how the adult is trying to make sense of that. So the problem uh, is fixed not just at the level of content, it has to take into account, right, uh, into account what was actually said, the words that were said, right? Without, without doing that, we can't explain this whole interaction. So this is one, one piece of data we'll come back to later. Um, second example is an example from the Paris Metro. Um, so uh, it, it, this says just in, in French, uh, uh, Excuse my accent. And you see these two, uh, these uh, orangutans. So we had a gorilla before. Here we have orangutans. And um, they're laughing their heads off. In fact, orangutans as, as, um, uh, can uh, have this ability to laugh and laugh actually in a, in, in a rather uh, uh, profound way. Um, so it's not just a question of tickling. It's also a question of, of, of as, we'll, as I'll talk about later, uh, a little bit, um, a question of, of um, incongruity. Um, so ba but basically for us, when we see this, uh, what happens is that we, we make the following basic inference. Um, I'll take up your savings, and if, if somebody says, I'll take up your savings, and then somebody else laughs, then we draw the inference, I don't think you'll take care of my savings, right? So somehow the laughter, right, th this, this act of laughter, can give rise to this uh, inference. And laughter is actually a very common occurrence in, in, in conversation. Um, recent work that we've done shows that it, it, it happens between 10 and 20% uh, of the time in, in conversation, actually. We have lift, uh, laughter acts. So this is actually a very uh, pervasive kind of uh, phenomenon. OK, so these are two pieces of data that we want to be able to, to say something about. Um, the essential view I'm going to put forward is that um, utterances are resolved via dialogically based reasoning grounding in, grounded in context. Um, that, I guess, is, is not very surprising in, in, in a sense. Um, slightly, sli slightly less clear um, claim is that a dialogue participant classifies her utterance on the basis of her own context, something that we'll call her dialogue game board. Um, so what we need some kind of theory of dialogue game boards and a means of classifying utterances. Um, now, the framework that I'll, that I'll talk about um, is grounded in a logical framework called Type Theory with Records, um, originally developed by Robin Cooper. Um, and there's some references here for, uh, ab about this framework. This framework um, can be used to model semantic ontologies, um, interaction, and also to write uh, dialogically oriented grammars. So somehow uh, one can, in, in a uniform way, um, try and describe this whole process, both about the, 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 um, the utterances, the interaction, and also uh, content. Now, uh, type theory with records is inspired both by uh, situation theory and constructive type theory. So from um, situation theory, uh, it takes the idea of semantics as a stock ontology construction, in particular the emphasis on structured objects for explicating properties, propositions, and questions. Um, from constructive type theory, it takes the idea of a repertory of type constructors, in particular that, uh, records and record types is a kind of, some kind of structured uh, types, um, and the idea that the types are, are, are witnessed somehow, that they have witnessing conditions. Cent central to type theory is the notion of a judgment that an object, A, say, is, it, is of type T, um, A colon T. Um, 
Type theory of rec records is a rich type theory. Um, and, and that way, it, it contrasts with the uh, very uh, common uh, uh, sort of uh, notions of type theory that, that uh, used to be standard in, uh, in, in many senses, perhaps still are, in uh, natural language semantics, like Montague semantics, which, which sort of is a, where the type theory goes back to essentially uh, Witt Wittgenstein's Tractatus. It's a very sparse uh, and uh, punishing kind of type theory. Um, that's, that's the Montague-Oven type theory. Whereas the type, uh, type theory of the records is, is, is much more um, ontologically promiscuous, if you want, um, where you have types that correspond to basic ontological categories like entities, uh, functions, sets, but also um, a, a much wider range of things like uh, uh, common nouns and uh, types of events. Um, so basically, it gives you some, some notion of a, a, a more standard notion of a, of a, a, a token uh, type relation. And I'm not going to go into, into, into the formal details, but the idea is that, that this is, in a way, you can build up an ontology uh, a bit like uh, set theory, but, but with much more uh, structure in it. Um, now, the perspective that uh, I'm going to take on dialogue um, is drawn from a framework we've been developing over the last uh, 20 years or so. Um, and the basic idea is that we have a cognitive architecture in which there's no single common ground, but distinct um, yet coupled uh, dialogue game boards, one per conversationalist. And I already gave you some initial uh, idea for why, why we uh, want this kind of uh, uh, relativization of context uh, to explain exactly the kind of potential um, mismatches that occur in conversation with respect to um, understanding, for instance, uh, understanding what, what the content is. Um, and we'll see uh, a little bit later some uh, even more concrete data about um, why we need to have these, uh, why there's no longer uh, some, some kind of just context, but things have to be somehow diff potentially different uh, for uh, different uh, interlocutors. Um, and you can also think, think of this in, in terms of more, more spatially grounded uh, views that somehow when we do reason, we sometimes, uh, obviously we, we sometimes try to take perspectives, but um, nonetheless, a lot of the time we are using our own perspective in our reasoning. So the dialogue game board is this kind of structured object, which uh, uh, some kind of a dynamic repository, um, so I'm calling it game board, um, slightly, uh, I suppose, 21st century uh, terminology as opposed to kind of baseball. Um, and um, the idea is that this is a, 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 a dynamic repository that keeps track of various uh, sort of in, important uh, aspects of the context for the participant. So things like uh, the turn ownership, um, the shared assumptions, the visual scene, um, the questions under discussion, and two, uh, two, two other uh, slightly more uh, specific to this framework notions, which I'll, I'll come to in a moment, um, and they're important in, in understanding the process of, of metacommunicative uh, interaction. So one is the, the moves that have taken place in a conversation, um, and the other is the moves that have, that, that have just happened and are not yet uh, grounded, in, in a sense that I'll uh, explain in a moment, uh, a sense going to, to back to uh, Herb, Clark, Herb Clark's work. So um, this is the basic idea of a game board. Um, and um, the, the very simple kind of examples of, of, uh, of update that occur in, update and down date that occur in this, in this, uh, in this approach, um, in, the, in this respect, very, very similar to what uh, Craig was talking about before. Uh, so querying involves somehow incrementing CUD with a question, um, uh, assertion, involves incrementing, uh, assertion of P involves incrementing CUD with the, the, the issue of whether P is the case, right? In an interactive setting, if I assert something, then I'm kind of putting it on the table for discussion. Um, and this, this potentially can be discussed, but um, it can also, if there's agreement about it, then the issue is, is no longer on CUD, um, and the shared assumptions get updated with the relevant uh, uh, fact. So on this picture, uh, context change is specified in terms of conversational rules, uh, rules that specify the effects applicable to dialogue game board. 
that satisfies certain preconditions. Um, and this allows both the electricity effects to be modeled and, as we'll soon see, uh, also uh, kind of uh, electricity effects. So I'll give you one example of such a rule, a very uh, simple kind of uh, rule. Um, this is a rule that we we'll call uh, Q-specificity. Um, and it characterizes the, the contextual background of both reactive queries and uh, assertions. Um, so the idea, the, the idea behind this rule is that if a question is um, the maximal element of CUD, um, then subsequent to, its, to, to this, um, either con conversational participant can make a move that is constrained to be um, what we call Q-specific, a technical notion in the, in, the, in the semantics of questions, uh, uh, basically that, that, that it's uh, either something which is a partial answer or a sub-question of that question. So that, that gives, uh, the, that, that, that's the, the basic, um, this basic principle, and this is, a, this is a slightly more formal version of this, um, which again, uh, th th we, we don't need to, to go in, into, into this, uh, in, into the actual uh, formal details uh, now. Um, Okay, so now how does this lead us, lead us to relevance? Um, the basic idea then is that, uh, so, so relevance in, in, in dialogue actually is, is a rather intricate notion. Um, some of it can be characterized just in terms of basic questions that get uh, added to the context from queries and assertions. Um, that is uh, what I'm calling here question specificity. But if you try and, 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 and make a systematic um, characterization of the various dimensions of relevance, then um, uh, by looking, uh, th then you'll come up with something like the following four dimensions. Um, so there's the dimension that I already specified. There's a dimension which I'll call uh, meta-discursive re relevance. So a notion that, that underwrites uh, utterances like I don't know, or I don't want to talk about this. Um, there's a dimension that we might call genre-based relevance, so uh, um, a, a notion that's, that's much studied in, in AI. Um, so that refers to uh, the, the particular domain you're in, whether you're dealing with a, um, a train station in the days before uh, people bought the, the tickets on the web, um, a train station, a shop, uh, a court, uh, court interaction, all sorts of um, different kinds of uh, uh, domains which give rise to distinct kinds of um, potential relevance. Uh, a bakery, right, so the fact that w when you uh, enter into a bakery, the first thing you, you can say without, without any kind of interaction is just uh, two croissants, right? And that's immediately understood as I want two croissants, um, and then the, 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 uh, the baker can say uh, that's uh, five euros, um, inexpensive bakery. and. Um, that's understood as that costs five euros. All of that kind of information is deriving from uh, issues that are, are, are specific to the, to the genre. And third dimension, the, the, the fourth dimension I'll mention here, the meta community relative relevance, um, and that's a notion that underwrites uh, clarification, uh, interaction, and um, self-repair, as we'll come to, to late, later. So I'm not gonna go into, into, into explicating all these dimensions. I'll just mention, I'll just focus now on uh, meta community relevance given the example we saw at the beginning. So, the question then is how do we integrate meta-community of interaction in, in, into, the pic, into this initial picture that I've, that I've spelled out of, 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 of context. Um, so basically the idea is this. Um, whenever an utterance happens, there are two essential branches. One is um, utterance that the, 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 the utterance is understood um, and in such a case, its content is added to the common ground and uptake occurs. And the other um, branch is um, the branch whereby clarification interaction ensues. So some aspect of an utterance causes a problem and um, this triggers an exchange to, to try and repair the problem. So this means that somehow in our representation of the context, we need to have an entity which somehow um, encodes both uh, from which we can somehow read off both some kind of notion of potentially shared understanding, um, but also the potential for clarification, uh, uh, for clarification. Um, so 
to make this a little bit more concrete, the idea is that, um, that given the presupposition that a nutrient is taking place, um, we keep track of, so if you remember my, my picture of the, of, the, um, of the game board here, we had one of the, one of the um, repositories, um, one of the, the dimensions, one of the fields of the dialog game board is something that I call pending. So as soon as we have this presupposition that an utterance has happened, um, we add into, um, into, the, into the, 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 the game board this um, complex data structure that, will, um, that has two, two, two um, fields in it, one for, the, for our representation of the utterance, and the other for a, a type by means of which we classify the utterance. Um, and for reasons that I don't want to get into now, we call these things locutionary propositions. Um, these things are actually an instance of the way we represent uh, propositions in general propositions, uh, Austinian propositions, uh, if, if, if the term uh, says something to you. So this is the, the, this is the, the basic uh, effect of, of an utterance. Um, and this, of course, presupposes that in context, as soon as we have, um, as soon as we, we realize that an utterance has happened, then um, we need to have some, some kind of notion of representing um, an utterance, an utterance uh, of, of classifying an utterance. And here is an example of an utterance type. That's what we're using the type theory for, um, for, for, for having a structured representation of, of utterances. This is sort of somewhat in, in, in the style of uh, something like a head-driven predator programmer, but this can be, can, can be used in, in, in other kind of uh, formalisms too. Um, so there are various dimensions. This is some kind of classification of the utterance that, 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 that results by me, as a consequence of, of the passing process. Um, and from, uh, if, if we just focus on, on the somatic point of view, we have here uh, certain parameters that need to be instantiated um, in order that the meaning uh, actually uh, becomes a content, right? So if, if the utterance is something like is George here, um, then it, it, that constitutes, um, it, that, that involves certain kind of words that have, ha that have been said and, and syntactic constituents that, that ensue, and it leads to certain kinds of uh, parameters that need to be resolved, um, one for the, uh, for, the, for the location, one for the, for the time, um, for the speaker and the addressee, um, in order to get the value of, uh, and for the reference of the, 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 the proper name. Um, so that uh, gives rise to the, to, to the problem of trying to resolve these uh, parameters. Um, and then a, uh, in, in the case where we actually have values for these parameters, then we have this a more complex uh, structure that puts together the, a, a token, um, so a, rep, a, a, a token of the utterance um, and this type which um, if there's been successful uh, communication in this particular case, then the type fully classifies uh, the token. So, this, the, in, the, in this way then we have our basic um, story about um, the, the potential for grounding and clarification interaction. In, in the case of grounding, so the utterance is understood, then we update moves with the utterance, or rather we update move with the, with the, with the complex um, locution proposition. Um, in the case where clarification interaction has to happen, then the, the, this entire structure, the, the, the utterance remains for future pro processing in, in, in pending, and then a clarification question calculated from this utterance updates CUD, and that clarification question becomes the discourse topic. So we have this basic, uh, this basic kind of flow chart. Um, we start with an utterance, um, if it's grounded, then depending on whether it's an assertion or query, certain kinds of updates will happen to CUD, um, and uh, an assertion can lead to an update of facts. Um, if the utterance is not grounded, that leads to clarification interaction, um, an update of pending with the locutionary proposition that corresponds to, um, to the utterance, uh, which leads to calculation of a clarification question, and um, this basic uh, cycle continues. Okay, so um, to, reiter to, re to reiterate what I was saying, failure 
to fully instantiate contextual parameters or recognize phonological types triggers the clarification interaction. Um, and this involves accommodation of questions into context by means of certain class of, of conversation rules. Um, and the reason we can do this is that, um, in fact, there's a highly restricted uh, um, range of p potential questions that can follow um, uh, an utterance. So the people who first looked at, at, at this problem were the conversation analysts. Um, and they just said that uh, 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 um, essentially all, all aspects of the, of the communication are um, up, for, up, for, for, up for grabs. And in principle, of course, this is true. But in fact, um, corpus studies that have looked at the range of uh, possible clarification questions have, have found that, that um, basically they uh, fall down to, the, to uh, they're restricted to, to, to essentially three kinds, uh, or four I should say, but I've, I've, the, 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 the 90 something percent are exhausted by, exhausted by these three types. Repetition requests, like we saw before, the huh. Um, reference resolution, um, and in a generalized sense, so not just reference um, of uh, nouns, but also reference in the sense of uh, the senses of, of, say, verbs. And confirmation. So these are, since, since there's a, 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 such a small range of, um, of potential questions, we can essentially um, uh, specify in a, in a, a, a small number of, of potential in, uh, inference rules for this. And I'll give you an example of one such inference rule. So, Let's say we have an example like A says, is Bo leaving? Um, then the uh, examples in uh, 5B through F, um, these, these are all fragmentary utterances, and they can all be inter interpreted in, in a fairly straightforward way. So is Bo leaving Bo? That can mean, who do you mean Bo? The who equally can mean, who do you mean Bo? Um, and that that's at least gives, uh, some justification for the assumption that the context that emerges in clarification uh, interaction always potentially involves the accommodation of an issue um, that in, in this particular case is f f uh, basically allows us for any, any constituent to, to accommodate the appropriate um, uh, question of what did you mean by that, by uttering that, that particular constituent. Um, and um, equally, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, and then the, the, the basic um, uh, coherence relation that, that comes in, it, then there's a basic co coherence relation that comes into the picture in terms of what can the, um, what, are the what are the potential follow-ups and again, this is a, a slight, uh, um, the, the, the te technical details are, are not particularly important, but, but essentially it, 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 it means that um, any kind of utterance that, is, that, um, that, that shares the, the, the abstracted proposition uh, relevant to the clarification question is, uh, 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 it is a potential uh, uh, follow-up utterance. So um, in the case of, uh, so, so these are all examples of whether Bo left, who left, and which student left. These are all co-propositional co because they all share the basic nucleus of, of, um, of um, a, a basic nucleus. Um, so therefore, the, here's an example of, of a kind of accommodation process that, 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 that the kind of uh, uh, um, rule, uh, conversation rule, uh, that gives rise to clarification interaction. So basically, this is a general rule that tells us that whenever we have an utterance, um, and u0 is a constituent of that utterance, then we're allowed to infer, uh, to, to make as the question under, uh, under discussion, the issue of what did the original speaker mean by that sub utterance. Um, and then we're allowed to follow, follow that up by, uh, we're restricted, our, rest uh, our, our relevance, our, our, the, the utterance that are now uh, possible are any utterances that satisfy this uh, basic uh, co-propositionality um, condition. Okay, so um, 
I'll make this a little bit concrete by showing you exactly what, how this, how this uh, account can um, give you a story for something that, that I've once referred to as, as the turn-taking puzzle. And the turn-taking puzzle is, is this, that um, after somebody makes an utterance, um, depending on who takes the turn, the context is actually becomes different. Okay? So if A says, who does Bo admire? And B takes the turn and says Bo, then the three, th this is three ways ambiguous. It can mean, does Bo admire Bo? So that's just sort of the, the short answer kind of uh, reading. Uh, another reading is just a confirmation. Bo? Excuse me. Um, it, are you asking about Bo? Um, and a third reading is, is this reading of, of who's Bo. So these are, all possible, uh, these are all possible readings for Bo if B takes, takes the turn. On the other hand, if A keeps the turn, who does Bo admire? Bo? These two readings, uh, readings two and, this is a typo here, readings two and three disappear. Right? Um, so somehow, um, the only reading, that the, 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 the two readings that emerge, one is the reading, the first reading, the short answer reading, and the other reading is potentially, though, the, um, is, is a reading where you're, you're somehow not sure what you, what, what you just said. Um, so this is, is, is the, one of the basic motivations for this, for this view of context that there's no longer context. The context is really different depending on, so we need as, in terms of our reasoning, we need to, to have this kind of agent specific version of, of the, um, if you will, the, the, the scoreboard. Um, and a lot of the time these things coincide, but potentially these things can diverge and then we try and fix them to get them back on track. Um, so, given all, I, all I've told you now, we, we have a, a, a basic story for that, uh, for, for, for this puzzle. So if A says, did Bo leave? Um, this is what can happen. Um, let's assume that A said, did Bo leave? And that B lacks a referent for Bo. So as far as A, A's update goes, um, so A has, so, so this is the, uh, given their knowledge of the language, um, this is the, the kind of, uh, so there were three, three little sub utterance events, did Bo leave? Um, and given our knowledge of, gra given A's knowledge of grammar, she can, um, she can classify this utterance in terms of this type, um, this type that has three constituents and has for, for, to make things simple, two contextual parameters, one for the speaker and one for the referent of, of Bo, um, no tense here. Um, and um, so, since the speaker in this particular case is, knows what she's saying, she's kind of coherent, she hasn't, uh, assume, let's assume she hasn't been uh, uh, reveling too much, so she's kind of coherent. So she has a way of instantiating the contextual parameters and therefore, her update to the dialogue game board will lead to um, a representation of this, this, this literature proposition that involves this type um, and a token for, this, for, for the values for these uh, contextual parameters. Um, and therefore, this leads to an update of CUD with the question whether Bill left. On the other hand, what's happening for that? We're seeing this in, in this situation, lacking, uh, assuming, that, that, assuming that she lacks a value for uh, this parameter B, then this is going to be the, the, the basic record that she has in order to, uh, what she can at the moment instantiate for the contextual parameters. And so she will go through a reasoning um, based on this contextual uh, conversational rule um, that will trigger for her the issue of um, what did the speaker mean when they said Bo. So she updates um, her, so she keeps this previous utterance as uh, in, in pending. She doesn't update, she, it's, 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 it has to stay in pending rather than become a, a full-fledged move. And for her, the discourse topic now is uh, what did the speaker, what did A mean by, by making this utterance both? 
So this is, how, this is an example of how the context can diverge um, in a very systematic way, right? This is not something very arcane. In, in a totally systematic way, um, in, in a very uh, kind of day-to-day uh, -day kind of way, and this is also the basis for the, essentially the basis for the kind of interaction that we saw before with the, uh, um, the uh, what was it? Um, the pleasant legions, right? So if, if uh, Sophia says, well, there's the pleasant legions, then this basic reasoning process is what will lead to the, uh, to, to, to the both to, to the pleasant legions. So, so the issue of what did Sophia mean by the pleasant legions will become for the parent the question under discussion. And this is why, plus, plus a little bit of grammatical work, why this can become, um, come to mean, um, what did you mean by that, by that utterance? Um, but it's crucial that this reasoning, as you can see, it's, it's crucial that this reasoning involves both, it's not just at the level of content, it involves the full utterance representation. Um, and, um, okay. Okay, so um, now I'll move on to, uh, to more briefly just um, to talk about uh, disfluences and laughter. So typically we think of disfluences as kind of thing that, you know, it's kind of noise and okay, they happen, what can we do? But that kind of thing to be filtered away. In fact, I'm not, I don't have time to, to go into this in detail, but, but disfluences are actually a source, potentially a, there's, there's, lots of, uh, there's lots of interesting, uh, even cross-linguistic variation in terms of how they're realized. Um, and they participate in, in, in a, a variety of, of uh, uh, semantic uh, and pragmatic processes. Um, but here I'll just give you one, one very simple example. So if we have um, a, a, a conversation where Frida says, because, um, and now there's a silence of three seconds. Three seconds, of course, in a conversation is, is, is a really long time, right? Um, so if she says, because uh, we can deduce from this that Frida was unsure what, what she should say after because. Right? That's an inference that we can, we can draw. Right? If we filter away the fluences, we're filtering away the, the, the potential for, for drawing this inference. Right? Um, and as a further defeasible inference from this, from this filled pause, um, we, can, we can draw this further inference. Frida wasn't sure about how to explain the situation. Okay? Um, so this is an example of, 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 of why we want to have a way of reasoning that also, that, that really starts with, with and includes a representation of the utterance that includes also the, the, um, the, the self-repair. So the basic account that I've just given you of clarification interaction um, extends to self-repair um, in a, in a really straightforward way. So basically, the idea is this. Um, as the utterance unfolds incrementally, so, so up to now we've had this, this kind of view that I make an utterance, and at the end of the utterance, as it were, I kind of have to try and ground the utterance. If I succeed, I, I continue. If I don't succeed, then I stop and, and engage in clarification interaction. All we do here now is to make things incremental. So to assume that this process is, is not happening at the end of utterances, but it's happening after each word and arguably even more frequently, right? Because we have uh, evidence for self-monitoring where things get cut by in, in mid-word, right? Mid-word uh, self-repair is, is actually quite common um, and a very good predictor of uh, mid-word, uh, 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 mid uh, this is, is a very good predictor of, of a repair. So the idea is that this monitoring process is happening every word. After each word, the speaker is, is monitoring herself and saying, is what I produced really what I mean? Uh, if yes, I continue. If not, I have to engage in, as it were, self-clarification interaction. So, um, and that can, 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 can come in terms of, in, in, two, in two directions, either looking backwards, so, has what I said now, up to now, um, been what I wanted to say? And if not, I have to do a, 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 a correction. 
But it can also be forward-looking in the sense of, um, oops, do I know what I want to say now? If not, I potentially throw in a uh, filled pause um, or um, uh, even an actual question, right? So we can say things like, uh, and this is the commonest kind of, uh, in English, but, but there's a lot of cross-linguistic variation in this. This is the commonest uh, problem point. In production, she saw the, um, those of us who are over a certain age uh, know this thing, hap thinks this thing happens. She saw the, um, what's the word? Right. So this what's the word is, is an overt um, instance of this accommodation, this accommodation process of, uh, of a question about my options um, about how I'm going to resolve my realization problem. And equally, you can, write, uh, you can have a, a more uh, a similar kind of version of this in French, you see, comment dire, right? When we're, you're trying to think what the, what's the predicate I'm going to put after this week. Um, so the basic idea then is that the uh, monitoring and update clarification cycle is, is, is now modified to happen at the end of each word utterance. And in the case of the need for repair, a repair question gets accommodated. Um, and this um, ubiquitous self-monitoring ties in with commonly accepted uh, assumptions in, in, in uh, cognitive psychology, uh, work on emotion, um, in terms of the appraisal process. So I'm going to tie this in now uh, in the few minutes that remain to laughter. Um, so laughter um, is an instance of non-linguistic, I'm putting this in, in a question mark because what exactly what linguistic is is, is I think um, something that, that we can uh, still uh, question. But for the moment, let's let's um, because we, we uh, systematic study of laughter is, is still actually even though laughter has been studied since uh, since Plato and and um, and Hobbes and uh, Kant and uh, Bergson and so on, uh, and more recently uh, by social psychologists, actual uh, cross, uh, controlled check uh, 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 control studies of the difference. Cross-linguistic realizations of laughter is, is, is still very much a, a um, kind of a, um, happening as we as we speak now. But anyway, it's an instance of um, non uh, for the moment non-linguistic and actually very inferentially based, as, as I'll explain in a second, uh, where the contextual uh, uh, of, 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 a, of, a, of a kind of um, signal right that is both inferentially based involves strong contextual resolution and can be can be done by both apes and neonates, right? So children begin to laugh from about three, four months. Um, and even you, you can find easily on YouTube examples of, this is not just laughter, again, from, from tickling, but you, know, you can see kids of, of this age, you tear a piece of paper and they begin to laugh, right? Um, and similar things actually happen with apes, right? With, uh, for instance, there's a, the, you, the, you can see, uh, again, uh, you can see a, a, a YouTube of a orangutan being shown some kind of magic trick and looking at it and then starting to laugh. Um, so these are a really, it's a very, very interesting uh, phenomenon that, that, that actually um, sort of extends our potential uh, uh, sort of reasoning, not just a reasoning that's based on, on something that's, that's grounded in language. Um, and it even occurs at a sub utterance level. So for instance, for uh, uh, scare quoting, so I'll give you just this little example here. Uh, I hope it works. Um, this is from uh, Woody Allen's Manhattan. Um, okay, so you might have missed that. It was so fast. So notice that he he says, "This is my friend. This is my friend, <laughs> Mary Wilkes." Um, Okay, so you can see then that this can actually occur right at the sub utterance level, and here it's being used to some kind of scare quoting um, of, uh, of the word friend. He realizes that she's actually my lover, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to use friend for that. Um, and okay, 
So now laughter, again, one of the, the, the big problems in, 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 in um, explaining what's going with laughter is, is actually pinning down its function. Um, but at least uh, it's one, one general kind of class of functions that it has is to signal incongruity. So basically, uh, we can classify, the, we can characterize this, 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 the, the meaning something in the, in the following terms. Laughable L is incongruous. Um, and the addressee needs to resolve, resolve what we're laughing about and the source of incongruity, right? Um, so this is actually a, 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 a really difficult kind of um, uh, um, reasoning process, right? So for instance, if, if we go back to this example with the, with the when my banker uh, uh, says that he's going to take care of my um, savings account, right? Um, and ha, 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 right? So we easily, as you saw, you, could, you, you, you automatically drew the inference, right, that it means, that's ridiculous, right? So this is the use of, of, of laughter to cancel seriousness, right? Um, and essentially, we can, I'm not gonna, we don't have time to go into the details. Um, I referred to a recent paper that, that we wrote uh, about this. Um, but basically, the idea is to, is to, um, to uh, explicate incongruity as a clash between token classification and some kind of contextually recovered uh, enthymeme, some kind of a, um, yeah, rule of, uh, sort of, rule of, of thumb. Um, and then for, we can derive various kinds of instances of this. For instance, ans uh, assertion cancellation, or some kind of a clash between, uh, 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 in context, not intending that the assertion be believed, and the general rule that if someone asserts P, they, they, they believe P. Okay. So, just to summarize then, I've tried to give you a, a basic picture of reasoning conversation using utterances and nonverbal signal, social, signal, social signals um, based on, um, which is somehow grounded in agent relativized public contexts or dialogue game boards. Um, and this, this particular implementation is done using type theory records, um, which allows us to integrate reasoning about utterances and about the, the dialogue context. Okay, so I'll stop. Thanks. Yeah, okay, I mean, this particular, right. I mean, as, as I said, there's the certain, the certain degrees of defeasibility de here. So, I mean, from here to here, it's, 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 it's pretty strongly defeasible. Uh, here, it's a, it's, it's, it's a really pretty strong, uh, strong inference, right? If, if you make this, this uh, uh, yeah. yeah I mean, so, right. And where is the defeasibility in, in the system? Or, um, well, I mean, here, it, 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 it's just the point that, that right, if I, if I somehow, if, if I produce a, a, a filled pause, right, then um, sometimes it, it's, it's just a, a kind of a, a fairly low level sort of thing that there's a question to, to what extent it's strategic, but it certainly can be a strategic thing, right? It's, um, right, so I'm, I'm exactly now thinking, uh, how am I gonna continue this? Because I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna say now, right? So, yeah, I mean, the, it, the, this is obviously, there's, there's a certain amount of, of uh, what the probabilities are, I, I, I can't give you an, an exact list, but, but certainly it's, there's a fairly, do, a fairly decent uh, probability that, 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 that this is about, um, about some, some planning problem that I might have in, in some way. A uh, planning problem or even, or even something more low level in terms of lexical access, right? That I, I'm, 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 thro I'm throwing this filled pause because I have a lexical access problem. Okay, so unsure here doesn't mean that it's necessarily planning, it can just be just lexical access, right? Attribute a different question than the question that is asked. So, mm -hmm. like, 
difficulty, but. Sure. Right. So that, that, that's, a, that's an issue. Right. That, that's, a, that, that's a case where the, the reasoning, the, the resolution is at the, at the level of the, um, the, the highermost uh, utterance, right? So it's, it's not a question of, uh, of, 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 of a specific uh, uh, meaning with respect. So it's a resolution problem of the, of the, the, the highest level of constituent, if you will, right? Okay. So all these examples before, we, right, we had like the, the, the question of the, uh, whatever was the, the uh, pleasant legions, right? So that's, they intended by the, 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 the pleasant legions something that really deviated from its conventional meaning, but it was, you could, you could, you could understand that, and, and then it's, it's, it's nego ne negotiation of that meaning, right? So they're um, all metalinguistic images, or not metalinguistic, but they're all um, different from the... So, so, so there's a question, so, so, so yeah, I mean, the, the, there's a question, how, how, mu how much of, of, of this happens? So potentially you have this thing that, that can actually happen at the, at the level of the, sort of, of, of the intended meaning of the, of the full utterance, right? You've understood all the words, but you don't understand what I'm trying to do with it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it, this is just, uh, so the, the same basic uh, uh, setup can be applied to the top level uh, uh, um, constituent, if you will, and there you get your indirect meaning uh, clarification first. These are actually happen to be fairly rare. I mean, you need to you need to account for them, but they're actually in practice they're quite rare. Um, I mean, there's interesting there's there's very interesting questions about uh, sort of uh, predicting what which which uh, 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 constituents uh, which kind of yeah constituents give rise to. to uh, clarification interaction. So the way I've set it up here, everything go, everything. It's sort of worst case analysis. Uh, in fact, uh, there, there's, uh, for instance, there's a big asymmetry between nouns and verbs, um, which is uh, s something that that cannot be explained on on, on any kind of frequency fre uh, frequency uh, considerations. This, uh, also, also you can we we try to, to to check all sorts of kind of type token ratios, all kinds of things like that. Um, there's something like a 40, 40 to one disparity between nouns and verbs in that respect, um, which which is which has no, no, no grounding in, in any kind of statistical grounding. So it's it's actually an interesting puzzle of wh why we have this this basic uh, asymmetry in terms of, of clarification potential. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. So this, so, so yeah, so this framework comes, um, uh, type theory with records comes uh, from, from this tradition, the, the Martin Luther uh, tradition. Um, in that tradition, uh, type theory is constru construed in a very proof theoretic no, uh, ways, whereas what we're, we're, what we're trying to do here is, uh, th this is the Robin, Robin Cooper's original idea, was to, to actually cast this in a more, if you will, model theoretic kind of way. So that's why I, I had this slide with, with this basic ontology. Um, This one. So the idea is then that the, the type theory is, is, is allowing you to build some kind of ontology in that sense. So it's, it's kind of like a, a, a model theoretic view of type theory, right? And something that, that, that uh, sort of type, sort of your, your orthodox uh, constructive type theories don't think in these terms at all. They find this kind of like, no. But for natural language semantics at least, this is certainly something that people who come from this sort of more model theoretic uh, tradition, this is something that is, 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 is fairly natural to, to, to think in those terms. And so I was wondering whether you think this is uh, something that could be conventional or how you think of it as like being part of the general common or whether you think it's it's substantive whether you think it's substantive in terms of like the interaction. What's it? Or, like the kind of thing you're trying to capture here with it and like how it could interact Yeah, so I, th I, I mean I think. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I think this is somehow, I mean, uh, I think this is part of our, if you, grammatical competence, right? This is right, because exactly right, the, the self-repair, for instance, is something that is, that is happening as we're speaking, right? And that has, we, we see that it has all sorts of reflexes, for instance, different languages have different, you know, uh, not all languages have filled filled, the same kind of filled pause. The filled pauses are, uh, say, in French, uh, English, ah. Uh, American English, ah, uh, British English is a bit different. Um, 
and Chinese, for instance, uses demonstratives as filled, filled pauses, right? So all that kind of stuff shows that it's, it's really integrated in, in the grammar, and the same thing with, with clarification correction. 